Um, so my name is Megan Handel. I'm with the Montana Department of Transportation and the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Program. And um, I was just going to talk to you guys today about um, four different goal methodologies that we're setting um, for different airports in our transit program. Um, so I'm just going to go over the actual how you set goals and then discuss each one. Um, and then we can go over any comments if anybody has any comments. Uh, so I included some links on here for how you actually set the goals. Um, the DBE and ACDBE is airport concessionaire DBE goals. Um, they're pretty similar in their requirements, but they do have different links. And then USDOT um, also publishes a guidance for tips for goal setting. So we used um, those references when we set the goals. Uh, oh. Um, so for there's three basic parts to go about setting a goal and the first part is determining the base figure which is basically looking at how many DBE firms there are that do the types of work you're looking at doing for the next three years and then how many total firms and dividing those um, there's three main ways that you can do that um, the using DBE directories in the Census Bureau data you can use bidders less data or you can use data from a disparity study. MDT did do a disparity study back in 2016, um, which is still um, good and the data is still good from it. For another couple years, we're actually looking to um, start another one here coming up um, the next year. But for now, the 2016 study is good. It just, um, there are a couple limitations to it. Um, even though it is the most accurate kind of study, it didn't look at, um, contracts funded through transit and it didn't look at vertical construction so any type of building work but if there's um, any type of horizontal construction then it's probably best to use the disparity study um, and then when you're also looking at your base figure you need to define your market area where the substantial amount of businesses that are looking to do that type of contracting work or have done that type of work are based out of um, so once you set, do that division and come up with the percentage of DBEs that can work in that area, um, the next step is to look at adjustments to that figure. Um, one of the methods you could use is um, comparing it with past participation. And then there's a whole bunch of other things that the disparity study analyzed, um, such as there's barriers related to business ownership. Native Americans are less likely to own construction firms than non-minorities. Women in engineering are less likely to own companies than men. Um, there's disadvantages for women and minorities when they're trying to get access to financing and bonding. It also found that minority and women-owned firms are less successful than majority-owned firms and face greater barriers, and that they also experience discrimination in the industry. Um, so those are some different factors that you can apply to your base figure. Um, and then you, once you have that overall goal set, then you have to determine how much of that goal you can meet through race conscious or race neutral measures. So race conscious would be like a project specific goal. So say if you had um, a project and there was a 6% DBE goal on it, if the contractors didn't meet that 6% goal when they submitted their bid, then they wouldn't get that um, bid. It would go to the next bidder who met that goal. Um, most of the work that we do is actually race neutral, um, which would be more along the lines of any type of program that helps small businesses in turn helps DBEs. So that would be like having small project sizes that DBEs or small firms can bid as primes on, um, training on how to bid, different things like that. Um, and the CFR encourages you to meet most of your goal through those race neutral measures as you can. So when we get to looking at the specific goals, uh, the first one I was going to go through is the Yellowstone Airport Concessionaire Goal. Um, so in order to have an airport concessionaire goal, you have to be a primary airport. And then there's two different types of goals you can set it based on car rentals. And then they have other than car rentals. And the limit for that is if they have, if their gross revenues are more than $200,000 over averaged over three years. 
um, then you need to set a goal. So Yellowstone recently became a primary airport, so we are now setting that goal for the car rental because they meet they exceed that two hundred thousand dollar threshold. Um, but the other than car rentals, like your um, restaurants and different shops, uh, that didn't meet the criteria. So we just set it for car rentals. Um, since this is new, we're not really sure what the market area is, but just based on West Yellowstone's logistics, um, being so close to three different states, uh, we define the market area as Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. Um, the disparity study didn't look at these types of um, work types when they did it, so we did use the DBE directory and Census Bureau data to set the goal. Um, the work types were actually based on what Missoula and Billings had used in their car rental goals for airport concessionaires since we didn't really have any history on what those um, car rental firms might use with their purchases. Uh, so that's how we came up with the work codes. And typically to make your goal more accurate, you would weight it based on like how much work, like more work would probably be, or more dollars would probably be spent on fuel and car dealers than maybe office and janitorial supplies. So typically more weight would be applied to those, but um, since we don't have any history at the West Yellowstone Airport, we're just going with um, the straight analysis of DBE firms divided by total firms. And so it's eight divided by 4,410, giving you 0.2% AC DBE goal for the West Yellowstone. Um, when we looked at step two adjustments, obviously there wasn't past participation and all of the factors from the disparity study, while there is things that affect the minorities and women, they weren't quantifiable, so we didn't make any step two adjustments. So the overall ACDB goal is 0.2%, and we are proposing to meet that through race neutral measures. Um, next for the DBE goal for Yellowstone Airport, um, this one we were able to use the disparity study data um, and the market area, when they did the disparity study, they looked at the different districts that MDT has set up and did a big survey on who does work in what district. And so we used the Butte District, which West Yellowstone Airport is based out of. Um, and this goal is just for one year. Uh, FAA has different cycles set up for different types of airports. Um, and since we just transitioned to a primary airport, we have to do a, a one-year goal and then we'll do a three-year goal next year in, in line with the primary airport cycle. Um, so as you can see, they are proposing to do um, some terminal improvements and constructing a runway vertical guidance system. And the work types are below. Um, the Construction of the actual terminal improvements may happen later on in the fiscal year. So it, um, we were, even though it's going to be vertical construction, the type of work that they may be able to get to in this time frame is excavation and drilling or excavation and foundation work. So um, we did feel comfortable using the disparity study data to calculate that goal. Um, and the weighted availability came out at 4.7%. Um, again, with step two adjustments, um, when we looked at past participations, the type of work they did in the past is um, somewhat different than what we're proposing to do. So we didn't feel that the past participation adjustment was necessary. And again, the other factors from the disparity study were not quantifiable. So there was no step two adjustments. The overall goal is 4.7% and proposing to also meet that through race neutral measures. Uh, as for Lincoln Airport, um, this is a three-year goal, and they are based in the Great Falls District for the disparity study. So we use that as our market area. Um, and the way FAA sets their goals, you do it for each year and then overall. Um, so I did a breakdown of each year. Um, the first year, they're planning on a master plan obstruction or tree removal, AGIS and installation of instrument approach procedure. Um, and that came up with a weighted 
average of 4.3% DBE or a DBE goal. And then for fiscal year 22, um, they have an installation of an automated weather observation station, acquisition of a purpose-built snowplow, which is not included in the step one um, figures based on guidance from FAA, but you do have to list it as a grant in the overall proposed project. And then um, they're constructing a snow removal equipment building. So when you do um, the weighted average for those, that comes up at 2.9% for that year. And in fiscal year 2023, it'll just be continuing any work that hasn't been completed. Um, so when you do combine all three of those years together, um, I actually I forgot to mention that the building construction, since that wasn't covered in the disparity study, we did use the DBE directory and um, Census Bureau data for that one um, line item. Um, so just this one line item is DBE directory and Census Bureau data and the rest is disparity study data. And when you do all three years together, it comes up with a weighted availability of 3.2%. Um, and again, no step two adjustments. Um, and we are proposing to achieve through race neutral measures. Uh, the last goal that we have is the transit DBE goal. Um, the market area was defined as Montana just because we have providers statewide. And again, since it wasn't covered in the disparity study, those work types, we did it through the DBE directory and Census Bureau data. Um, we had included a lot more work types than we did um, in previous years. And we've been requiring a quarterly breakdown to see what vendors are being used. So it allowed us to provide a much more accurate goal. So in, in prior years, we had just a big category of advertising services and it covered um, a big type of work, but we found that a lot of where the work is actually going is more of the newspaper publishers and radio networks. Um, so it really helped us to define that goal better. Um, and when you do the weighted DBE availability for that, it comes out at 0.7%. Uh, the median uh, past participation was zero, so we can't do that for past participation. So we didn't do a past participation adjustment and the other factors, again, were not quantifiable. So no step two adjustments for that. And the overall goal is 0.7% that we're proposing to meet through race neutral measures. So that was a pretty quick run through. Um, everybody can have a chance to provide comments um, and then we'll update the goal methodologies with those and submit to the appropriate federal agency. And uh, depending on what their timeline is, we're supposed to have the goals implemented by October 1st of 2020, but I'm not sure what their reviews are looking like during this whole coronavirus pandemic. So that's at least the goal is to have them implemented by October 1st, but we won't implement it until we get approval from them. Uh, so if anybody has comments, we you can do it here at the public hearing or you can also email them to the address listed on the page or mail them to the office. So does anybody have any questions or comments? Good job, Megan. All right, so I'm going to stop recording for now. Um, maybe.